Hello, hello, hello everyone, welcome to a new video, to a new live stream. Hola, hola a todos, bienvenidos a un nuevo en vivo. How are you doing today? ¿Cómo están? Espero que estén bien. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today we are going to learn some Spanish vocabulary, vocabulary about... A bathroom, whatever you can find in a bathroom. Um, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time I live stream. Also visit smlessons.com for more free Spanish lessons. And uh, if you want to download free stuff as well, please go to smlessons.com. And uh, yeah, if you want to read more about Spanish as well. I want to give a big, big shout out to Kay Beck and Stella Sabatini. They are Cafecito members. Thank you so much for the support, Kay Beck and Stella Sabatini. And it's greatly appreciated. Thank you for the coffee. If you want me to give you a shout out and if you want to support this channel, please check out the memberships on this channel. You can click on the join button down below. That helps this channel a lot, guys. So, if you can, please take a look. Okay, so, please, another way to support this channel is by just liking this channel and share it with your friends if they're interested in learning some Spanish. And uh, we're live streaming, so please use the live chat if you have any questions or if you want to say hola. <laughs> please use the live chat for that. I can see KS is in the house. Buenas noches. Un consejo para todos en el aprendizaje. Escuchar y leer, pero hacer más escuchar. Yeah, that's a great advice, KS. Uh, KS is pretty much saying uh, good evening or good night. Uh, an advice for everyone. When you're learning <clears throat> or during learning, just listen and read, but you should do more listening. <laughs> it's something like that. Thank you, KS. Uh, that's a great advice for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the bathroom. <laughs> so the first thing, well, the title. Oh, what is that? There's something here that it shouldn't be there, but that's the title of this lesson, Spanish lesson, bathroom vocabulary, okay? So we're going to go over 20 or so words about the bathroom. So the first thing we need to know is that bathroom in Spanish is el baño, el baño, okay? And uh, this is to refer to a house bathroom, okay? If you are outside and you have to use uh, the restrooms or a public bathroom, you can just say el baño público, okay? You can say that, el baño público, and that means just a uh, the restrooms or a public washroom or bathroom, okay? So this is um, pretty interesting. Other than that, I mean, you can refer to any bathroom. You can say el baño, el baño, okay? So don't worry about, oh, should I say el baño público or el baño? Just, you can just say el baño. I just wanted to let you know that some people call restrooms el baño Público, okay. Uh, Philip to Stan. Hola, buenas noches desde Trinidad. Hello, Philip. Welcome. And it's so nice that you are in Trinidad. That's amazing. Welcome. Welcome. 
The traveling Sagittarian. I'm definitely good at listening. LOL. <laughs> that is great to know. Thank you for sharing the traveling Sagittarian and welcome as well. Okay, so now let's look at the next word, okay? Oh, okay. Now we're talking about the toilet, okay? And there are different names for this. The first one is el retrete, el retrete. The second one is el excusado, el excusado. And the third one is la taza del baño, la taza del baño. Okay, and those terms are very commonly used. You can use either one. Um, I personally use la taza del baño, the last one, because I don't know, I just call it like that. In Venezuela, they, they call the toilet la poseta, la poseta. So that's very interesting. Uh, and if you want to call this, well, just the toilet in a funny way, if you want to refer to a toilet in a funny way, you can say el trono, el trono. It's like you're saying the throne. <laughs> so it's quite interesting, very funny. But the most commonly term, the most common terms to refer to a toilet is el retrete, el excusado, la taza del baño. And uh, yeah, just use either one. Okay, um, now let's look at the next word. El papel de baño. This is more like a phrase. So, el papel de baño. El papel de baño. And this means toilet paper. Okay, so yeah, you're just saying toilet paper in Spanish. El papel de baño. Okay, so that's a, a very straightforward term. Um, usually, I think this is the only term for toilet paper in Spanish. Uh, but yeah, el papel de baño. Perfect. Now, let's look at the next one. Uh, the traveling Sagittarian says, el trono. El trono, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're referring to the toilet or a toilet and yeah uh, a lot of people call the toilet or any toilet el trono el trono and it's just a funny way to refer to a toilet <laughs> so yeah so you can you can call it el trono the next word or phrase again is el cepillo de dientes el cepillo de dientes and this means toothbrush okay the toothbrush and um yeah it's a very literal translation el cepillo de dientes dientes means teeth cepillo brush and uh well el cepillo de dientes means toothbrush and uh, yeah that's the only term that i know of you know, that you can use to refer to el cepillo de dientes or a top toothbrush. Sorry. Okay, the next one. La pasta de dientes. La pasta de dientes. This means, you know what this means? Toothpaste. Toothpaste. And just as toothbrush, toothpaste is a very literal translation or la pasta de dientes that term is uh, just a literal translation and yeah that means toothpaste la pasta de dientes okay so that's very easy remember it's feminine la pasta de dientes the next term is la toalla la toalla this means the towel or just towel and um, yeah that's a, another easy term to remember la toalla it's not complicated you can find well you can call any towel toalla okay um there is an i know that in um there are different 
towel sizes and all of that, but you can refer to any towel as la toalla, la toalla, okay? And it's feminine. So that's a very, very good term, very, very useful if you want to refer to any towel. The next one is el jabón, el jabón. And this means soap or the soap. El jabón is masculine and, uh, well, any kind of soap, you know, like uh, that kind of soap, like we, like a bar, you know, uh, you can call it jabón. Um, you can call like liquid soap also, you can call it jabón, jabón. Um, any kind of soap, you can just say el jabón, okay? So I know there are more terms about this, but in general, you can call any kind of soap el jabón, okay? El jabón. Okay, the next one is el lavabo, el lavabo. And this means sink, okay? Specifically, the sink that you can find in a bathroom, okay? Um, there is another term to refer to the, you know, this kind of sink. You can call it el lavamanos, okay? El lavamanos. And this means also sink. And it's very funny because lavamanos is like you're saying uh, the thing that helps you to wash your hands, pretty much. Lava means washing or to wash. And manos, hands, okay? So it's a more specific term to refer to a sink where you wash your hands because the kitchen sink usually you wash other things you do dishes and you do other things but el lavamanos is the one that you can find in a bathroom so that's a very very curious term i really like it i personally personally say el lavabo el lavabo but some people call the bathroom sink el lavamanos El lavamanos, okay? So, two good terms to learn. So, let's see the next one. La regadera. La regadera. This means the shower, okay? And also another good term for this is la ducha. La ducha, la regadera, okay? So, um, either one works. You're pretty much referring to a shower, you know, and uh, yeah, you can use either one, la regadera, la ducha. I use la regadera, la regadera. That's, um, for me, that's uh, the term that I use the most, la ducha, la regadera. Okay. Yeah, and another interesting thing is if you're going to shower, you can say, uh, voy a la regadera, voy a la ducha. Um, and uh, another verb, or another verb, just a verb for if you want to refer to showering is uh, duchar, duchar. So la ducha, a verb will be, or the verb for this is duchar, duchar. Me voy a duchar. Okay, so that's quite interesting. But la ducha means the shower. La regadera means the shower. And uh, yeah, that's uh, those two are really good terms, very commonly used. So yeah, they're helpful. The next one is la bañera. La bañera or la tina de baño. La bañera, la tina de baño. Those two terms refer to the bathtub, okay? Bathtub. If you have 
A bathtub, you can call it la bañera or la tina de baño. I use the term la tina de baño, okay? I don't say la bañera, but that is a, a term used in the Spanish world. Uh, but yeah, I say la tina de baño, la tina de baño, okay? Um... Okay, yes, es lo peor de un apartamento es cuando el lavabo se obstruye. Se obstruye. Okay, uh, a more, I know in English, you call an apartment, well, you say apartment, right? To refer to a, a place where you live in an apartment building or something like that. Uh, some Spanish speakers say apartamento, but a more common term is departamento, departamento, and that means apartment. So I know in English, the department is more like an, a, a section of a building or an area where something happens. For example, the, I don't know, in an office, right? You have different departments, but in Spanish, departamento means apartment, Spe especially you're referring to an apartment where you can live, okay? And cuando el lavabo se tapa, se tapa, tapar means uh, when something gets clogged. So in this case, the sink can get clogged. So you can say el lavabo se tapa, ¿ok? Lo peor de un departamento es cuando el lavabo se tapa. Obstruye is a more different term. Um, it's more, it's, it's a different term. I would not use it if you want to refer to a clogged sink. Uh, but that's a great example, KS. Thank you for sharing. I just wanted to point that out just, uh, just so you know, guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a great example. Quetzal, la regadera y el lavabo están en el baño. That's correct. La regadera y el lavabo están en el baño. We're just missing an accent mark on top of the letter A. In the word es están. And baño, obviously the letter Ñ, baño, baño. But I understand that it's challenging to type the accent marks and whatnot. <laughs> Using the keyboard is quite interesting in Spanish. Uh, but yeah, I have a lesson about that uh, if you want to check out that on my channel. But yeah, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. Thank you for sharing, Quetzal, and uh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> okay, so la bañera latina de baño, la bañera latina de baño mean, both terms mean bathtub. Okay, the next one is... La crema de afeitar. La crema de afeitar. That means shaving cream. Okay. La crema de afeitar. Cre crema means cream. And uh, afeitar is similar to the verb. It's a verb in Spanish. And that means to shave or shaving. In this case, shaving cream. La crema de afeitar. Okay, so this is a common term, um, la crema de afeitar. I, you, usually this is the only term for, for that to refer to shaving cream. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting phrase. <laughs> the next one. This is something that I really like because it looks like... Um, a word was borrowed here. El champú. El champú. <laughs> and this means shampoo. Just shampoo. <laughs> but in Spanish, you can see that um, we pretty much borrowed the word shampoo. And uh, we added an accent mark to the letter U. <laughs> and obviously the pronunciation is a bit different. El champú, 
shampoo. Okay, so <laughs> I really like this word. I refer to shampoo in Spanish, el champú, as el champú, okay? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, el champú, el champú. So <laughs> that's a very, very good word. I, I love it, I love it. One of my favorite Spanish words for sure. Okay, the next one is el acondicionador. This is a long, long word. El acondicionador. And this means conditioner, just hair conditioner. Um, so <laughs> good luck trying to pronounce this word. I hope you can do it. You can just pronounce it a little slow first and then just whenever you feel more comfortable with the word you can start pronouncing it faster and faster so el acondicionador el acondicionador el acondicionador this means hair conditioner so yeah that's a good one and i gotta say the English word and the Spanish word, they're a bit similar. They're obviously, they're a bit different too, but uh, I think it's easy to remember. El acondicionador. <laughs> it's just a long word. Okay, the next one is el isopo. El isopo or el cotonete. <laughs> el isopo, el cotonete. And this means Q-tip, the Q-tip or a Q-tip, any kind of Q-tip. <laughs> el isopo, el isopo. That sounds a bit weird in Spanish. I use the term cotonete, el cotonete. And um, yeah, that's, that's the term that I use. But a lot of people refer to Q-tips uh, as el isopo. Isopo, el isopo. That is just a singular, the singular uh, form of this word. You can, uh, if you want to say this in a plural, in a plural form, you can say los isopos or los cotonetes. Okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna show you guys in case you want to say the plural form. Usually, you can. You use or you can see in a box a lot of Q-tips, so it's good to know the plural form as well. Los isopos, los cotonetes. Okay, so that's it. That means Q-tips. <laughs> but yeah, that's very interesting. I I say el cotonete. I think that's a more. I don't know. I like it more than el isopo. El isopo sounds more like. I don't know, like some sort of medication. I don't know, but I like el cotonete more. Okay, the next one is el rastrillo. El rastrillo, okay? El rastrillo means razor. And um, yeah, another common term, el rastrillo. And pretty much any kind of razor. Uh, you know, women use razors and also men. Um, you don't need a specific term for each one of them. You, you can just call it el rastrillo. Los rastrillos, that's the plural form. El rastrillo, los rastrillos, okay? And uh, KS is saying, también algodón does it mean cotton? Yes, algodón means cotton. Uh, but if we're talking about Q-tips specifically, um, we call them el cotonete or los cotonetes or el isopo, los isopos, okay? Um, we don't we don't add the word algodón cotton uh, because algodón you can for example um the cotton balls that um people use to remove makeup of their face you can call that um bolas de algodón 
But if we're talking once again about Q-tips, we call them cotonetes or isopos. Okay, so that's a great, great comment. Que yes, thank you for saying that. El rastrillo razor. Okay, so that's an easy term. Very easy. <laughs> Nothing complicated about that. The next one is la crema para el cuerpo. La crema para el cuerpo. And this means body cream. La crema para el cuerpo. And um, yeah, that's a, again, a very simple term to refer to body cream. You're pretty much saying body cream in Spanish. So there's nothing difficult about that. La crema para el cuerpo. Okay, so that's a great term as well. The next one is la secadora de pelo. La secadora de pelo. That means hair dryer. Okay, if you dry, if you dry hair dry your your hair <laughs> or dry your hair, you I, honestly I don't use this. I think it's too much work. Uh, it's I don't like it, but some people do. And if you want to refer to a hair dryer in Spanish, you can say la secadora de pelo. La secadora de pelo. Hair dryer. Once again, you're just saying hair dryer. It's, it's a very, very um, accurate translation of hair dryer. La secadora. Secadora means dryer. Uh, something interesting to know is you can change this. It's a different term, but you can say la secadora, la secadora de ropa. That's just to refer to a, a dryer, you know, that you use when you do your laund your laundry. You can say la secadora de ropa. Some people say that, but now we're referring to a hair dryer and uh, if you want to say that in Spanish, la secadora de pelo. Some people just say la secadora. If they're in the washroom and you're, let's say, you want someone to pass you your hair dryer, you don't say la secadora de pelo. Uh, you can say la secadora. Pásame la secadora. Uh, you can also say, pásame la secadora de pelo, if you want to be more precise, more, you know, uh, you, if you want to know, if you want to let the person know exactly what you want, you can say, la secadora de pelo, but some people call it la secadora, okay? That means hair dryer. <laughs> I, I hope that was something uh, clear for you. <laughs> the next one is, El hilo dental. El hilo dental, that means dental floss. Dental floss, el hilo dental. This is a bit different. Uh, in English, it's called dental floss, but in Spanish, you're pretty much saying the dental yarn, almost. Hilo means yarn, and uh, <laughs> I mean, it's... I think this is a more specific term, el hilo dental, uh, but in English, dental floss, okay? El hilo dental, dental floss, any kind of dental floss, um, but yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what you're saying, guys. Que yes says, algunas personas usan crema facial. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah, that's a term, specific term for, you know, the facial cream, cream that you put only on your face, um, crema facial, yep, or crema de cara, para la cara, there's so many terms for that one, crema para la cara, crema de cara, uh, yeah, that's another term, crema facial, that's another term. So, yep. Yeah. Armando Pajuelo. ¿Podrías ponerlo como se escribe en inglés también? Um, I could. I could. But it's, it's a bit confusing because some of you want me to just say it in Spanish. 
uh, no English translation. Some people say, please put the translation and all of that. But we're talking about it, guys. I can do that next time. Uh, Armando, by the way, welcome, Armando. But I, I don't see the confusion unless um, I have a thick accent, Armando. <laughs> but I'm just saying the in English um, what this means, the Spanish terms mean. Maybe you want to learn some English. That's another thing. Um, but yeah, dental floss. I'm going to try to do that, Armando. Thank you for your your question. El hilo dental means dental floss. Okay, the next one, guys. La tenaza de pelo or el rizador de pelo. Okay, so this means curling iron. <laughs> You can see it in the picture right there. La tenaza de pelo, el rizador de pelo, okay? And um, those two terms, those, by the way, those are two terms, not only one. La tenaza de pelo or la tenaza. You can just call it la tenaza. Uh, and el rizador de pelo, curling iron. Okay, the second term is a more accurate translation, curling iron, el rizador de pelo, because you're curling your hair, rizador, rizos means curls, and rizador is like a term that means curling. El rizador de pelo, pelo means hair, you know, the, this kind of hair. But also cabello means hair in Spanish. Um, the term for this, uh, what, what a curling iron, is la tenaza de pelo or el rizador de pelo. You can also say la tenaza de cabello, but it doesn't, it's not that commonly used. De pelo is a more common term to refer to a curling iron. Okay, la tenaza de pelo, el rizador de pelo. <laughs> I don't use this either because it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Who has the time? <laughs> well, I mean, if you use curling irons, like if you have a curling iron and you curl your hair, that's great, that's great. I'm just saying for me, it, it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay, the next one is comb, okay, el peine, el peine, we can see the image, big image <laughs> that uh, we're talking about el peine and comb, and uh, <laughs> I, yeah, you, you refer to comb or the comb as el peine, el peine, peine, and there is um, another term to refer to hairbrush because el peine is not the same as a hairbrush, okay? El peine is just to comb your hair. El peine. Peinar is the verb. Peinar mi pelo. Peinar mi cabello. To comb my hair. Um, el peine. And you use el peine, which is the tool, right? El peine. <laughs> the coma. Okay, the next one is actually el cepillo. El cepillo is, means the hairbrush, okay? The hairbrush. And um, yeah, el peine is different. El cepillo is different. You people use those things to fix their hair, to, you know, to, to do whatever they need to do with their hair. <laughs> <laughs> that I use, that, that I use because, it, I mean, it's necessary. I don't curl my hair. I don't, I don't, what, well, what else did I say that I don't do? The hair drying. Yeah, I don't do the hair dry, drying thing. I don't do the curl, I don't use a curling iron. Uh, too much work for me, guys. Usually I just shower and let my hair dry by by 
by itself. <laughs> I don't do anything. And then, uh, well, I use a comb or a hairbrush. Yeah, <laughs> usually a hairbrush. El cepillo, the hairbrush. Okay. Let's see what you guys are saying. Armando Pajuelo, sí, solo era porque algunas palabras no las conocía. Disculpa, allá y, allá y tu acento es súper bueno. Ok, Armando, muchas gracias por tu comentario. Si sí, es que quieres saber un poco más de inglés, estoy empezando un canal en donde eh, quiero enseñar inglés a las personas que hablan español. Y, ¿cómo se llama? Inglés hecho fácil. Inglés hecho fácil. Y voy a específicamente enseñar inglés. <ríe> no español. Inglés. Si sí estás interesado. Uh, pero en el futuro voy a tratar de poner los términos en inglés. Uh, en mis lecciones para que si quieres verlas también puedes ver mis lecciones en inglés pero muchas gracias por tu comentario uh, que okay, yes siempre tengo un peine that's good that's good that's good that's good to know thank you for sharing que yes armando pajuelo seré tu fan desde ahora uh, Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Armando. <ríe> Quetzal, las personas tienen muchos cepillos. Really? That's a great example. I only have one hairbrush. Just one hairbrush. Um, and it's a very simple hairbrush. So you can call any kind of hairbrush el cepillo. Cepillo, ¿ok? Cepillo para el cabello. Cepillo de pelo. So either one, but usually you can call it just cepillo, el cepillo, okay? So uh, yeah, that's a, a great example, quetzal, um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lena, Lena Kirkland, hola, ¿cómo está? Uh, estoy muy bien, Lena, muchas gracias, bienvenida. Also, Lena, nosotros hablo de baño. Okay, interesting, interesting example. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Lena. Okay, the next one is el espejo. El espejo. El espejo, that means the mirror. <laughs> el espejo, el espejo. And um, there's only one term for this, guys. El espejo, the mirror. You can call any kind of mirror espejo, okay? El espejo. It doesn't matter what it, where, where it is. You can just say el espejo. And um, yeah, the next, the next term is el tapete de baño. El tapete de baño. I love that. That bath, bath mat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you want to refer to a bath, bath mat, you can say el tapete de baño specifically, or you can also say el tapete, el tapete. That means pretty much mat, the mat or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter how big it is. There's small ones, big ones, medium size ones, doesn't matter. If it's a mat, just call it el tapete de baño. Specifically, if it is in the washroom or bathroom. Okay, the next one is la esponja. <laughs> la esponja. La esponja means the sponge, any sponge. Um, esponja... That's the that's the meaning of esponja, sponge. So if you want to refer to the one in, in your bathroom, you can just call it esponja, esponja. Uh, if you want to refer to the one that you use to do dishes with, you can say esponja as well. <laughs> so this term is very versatile. You can just 
say esponja if you want to refer to any sponge, including the one that you use in a bathroom. Okay, and we have one more term. That said, guys, just one more. And the term is el desodorante. El desodorante. This means deodorant or the deodorant. El desodorante. Mm, that's something really useful. <laughs> Anybody needs deodorant. I mean, um, it's up to you guys, but I, I use deodorant. Um, el desodorante. And uh, yeah, that's what this means. Any kind of deodorant. Because I know there's so many, many different uh, deodorants out there. But you can just refer to any deodorant as, or you can say el de desodorante. Desodorante. And that's it, guys. That's it. Um, do you have any questions? Do you want to know any other term in Spanish related to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to find the most common ones, uh, but I know that there's so many, there's so many, many terms, many things that you can find in the bathroom. Uh, but yeah, just let me know. Let me know. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Lina says zapatos. Zapatos, that means shoes. Lena also said, says, I have to watch later. Sure, you can do that. <laughs> Thank you, Lena. KS, aquí hay una idea. Usted podría vocabulario de cocina si quieres. Okay, you, you would like to know words related to the kitchen. I don't know if I have a video about that, but I don't think I, I, I don't think I have one. So yeah, I could do that for sure. Okay, yes, that's a great, great suggestion. I will do that. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's it. That's it, guys. Thank you, KS, for your suggestion. Any any questions? Any questions, guys? I see. Um, tomorrow, guys, we're going to have a podcast episode. And uh, it's going to be really good. So stay tuned. Remember to subscribe and also click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time I live stream. Mm. <clears throat> and I think that's, that's it. That's it, guys. I see you don't have questions. So I hope this, this, was, um, this was helpful. Thank you for your suggestions. Um, Armando, I'll try to add the, the English words the translation of the Spanish terms. Thank you for your suggestion. But as I was saying before, um, I have a um, channel where I'm trying to teach English to Spanish speakers. Um, I don't upload too often there, but I really want to start doing that. Um, the channel is called Inglés Hecho Fácil and that pretty much means English made easy. <laughs> Just like this channel Spanish made easy. I have one that is called Inglés Hecho Fácil, English made easy. So if you want to just subscribe to that channel, please do so. I'm gonna try to upload more lessons there. I just have like two lessons or three three lessons on that channel. But uh, if you are from Latin America and if you're watching this video or if you're from Spain or just a Spanish speaker 
who wants to learn English, um, check that out, guys. You can go to that channel. And uh, yeah, I have a few lessons there. So if you want to take a look, that will be great. But yeah, Armando, I'll, I'll try to add more English to my to my Spanish lessons. <laughs> but yeah, I understand that it, some people watch these lessons to learn English as well. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. And um, yeah, so <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. Um, Amanda... Vir, vritris, vrit, sorry, Amanda, <laughs> Amanda, gracias, you're welcome, Amanda, and um, I'm glad you liked the lesson, and uh, welcome to the live chat, que es disfrut disfrute de tu noche, thank you so much, que yes, and thank you for participating, I hope you have a lovely evening as well, of all of you guys, Armando Pajuelo, como me llego a enterar de tu Curso de Inglés. If you want to find uh, my English channel, you can just uh, type, if you if you search on YouTube, Inglés Hecho Fácil, um, you might be able to find it. I'm going to add the channel, the, a link to that channel in the video description down below. Um, so after I live stream, I'm going to do that. And, um, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the one. Or let me just do it really quickly, guys. <laughs> I'm going to send you the link. So, yeah, if you search on YouTube, Inglés Hecho Fácil. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's the first one that you can see there. I'm just going to... Um, just let me do that here. Do you guys speak other languages? Like, besides learning Spanish, are you learning any other language? Because I'm trying to learn French. It's so difficult, guys. Even though some people say French is so similar to Spanish. Yeah, yes, it is, but not that much. I think Portuguese is Italian. Italian is so similar to Spanish and um, I I think I should learn Italian. I don't know guys, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, I found that. I found that. I found that. So this is the channel Inglés Hecho Fácil. Okay. That is the um, that is the link, the direct link to my English channel. I know English is my second language, but you know some people really want to learn English, and I know that there there's some people teaching English out there. Some of them are really good, but I don't think they they live stream too much. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to live stream so people can ask me questions, you know, because it's different when you just have a video about something and just upload it to YouTube and that's it. Um, but I think it's better if you live stream, specifically if you're learning something, because if you have a question, you can ask the question. And I think it's easier that way. I think you learn more. But um, yeah. Just uh, if you want to check that out. Okay, so that is... Okay, yes. Estoy aprendiendo criollo, haitiano y francés. Wow. Wow, that's quite interesting, KS. Criollo, haitiano. Is that... I, I'm not familiar with that language, but it sounds very interesting, very good. Y francés, francés. Man, French is hard. It's hard. The R sound is so difficult. But <laughs> it's good to know. Okay, yes, thank you for sharing. And that's it, guys. That's it for today. I uh, hope you like this, this lesson. And uh, please let me know if... Well, you can... If you missed this live stream, you can just leave a comment down below or a question down below related to what we just learned. And um, tomorrow we will have a podcast episode. Stay tuned. 
remember to subscribe and also click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time I live stream. Visit smlessons.com, guys, if you want to learn more about Spanish, if you want to check out some free Spanish lessons as well. Just go there. You can download free free crossword puzzles as well. And uh, that will be it for tonight. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Give this video a like if you liked this. If you like this video, if you learned some Spanish. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. And uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Adios. Take care.